Oh, good morning and welcome back to 3R Guitars and this uh, Telecaster build. Um, yesterday we uh, we did the first cut of the um, the uh, um, neck tenon in the body and it's just perfect. Um, like I said, the, the neck's probably got too much of a break angle on it at the moment, but you can always go, um, you know, my plan was, you know, when I get the bridge, it's just in the post now, um, you know, I can titivate the bottom of the, 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 the neck to take off a little bit of angle and, and get the neck right. One thing I'm going to do now, which I have forgotten in the past, and if you forget, it's a real pain in the arse. Basically, you've got the front pickup, the back pickup, and it's the wire channel from the back pickup, from the, from the bridge, neck pickup to the control cavity is, uh, shall we say, um, something you don't want to forget at this stage, especially if you haven't got a pick guard. So um, where you've got the, the neck pocket here, drill, just go right through and go, you know, you can either go over and straight to the control cavity or to the back pickup. Um, I mean, when we were making this body, you know, we've already routed underneath there for the back pickup, so I'll just go straight, straight through and drill through. So I've got the, I've got the, um, you know, wire channel. Though I haven't cut the front cavity yet, um, the the neck pickup cavity. Once you know, I drill the hole and then cut the cavity. We'll we'll come across the hole we've drilled, and then we've, you know, very easily done the wire channel. If you forget. It is a real pain in the ass. So nice long drill and let's let's get that done. How simple was that? And if you forget, believe me, it's a pain. You've got to watch a little bit with these long drills because they are a bit bendy. Um, and once they start going offline, they've gone offline and you can end up doing something awfully stupid. So just drill in about an inch, pull it out, clear the shit off it and then carry on going in. Nice, simple. So we've got that done and I don't have to worry about forgetting it. So there we go, onwards and upwards. Be back in a minute. Well, hi there. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to route the uh, the edge of the back of the body with a nice curve. I'm going to do this as, with a much um, a larger radius than um, smaller radius, smaller radius than um, bigger curve, basically than a normal telly. Um, if you remember, I, w I was partially thinking about put in a, um, a tummy tuck route in it um, or cut and decided not to do that so instead I'm going for a, a much um, more curved edge on the back um, what you have to be careful here I mean I'll be using a router with this rollover bit kind of thing um, so I'll run that round the edge be nice and simple but what you don't want to do what you want to be careful of is you know you don't want to roll over the edge of the neck pocket because when you've got the neck in there um, you know it's coming down to there basically so this rollover will be will be too much there so kind of stop it about there and stop it somewhere there so you can run it out by hand you know going less and less of a radius but apart from that it's just a case of whizzing around the edge um, one good thing to have actually um, I don't know if I've mentioned it before but it's a good idea to have a bit of carpet on your workbench because the woods you know used for guitars some of them are hard like this is like concrete but this is relatively very soft and the last thing you want to do is have a small screw on your
a bench or something, put the thing down it and end up with a dent in the back. It's just just a pain in the ass sort of thing. Um, so, you know, a bit of carpet on there is good and it also holds holds it quite well if you're doing routing. Um, even better than that is a, is a proprietary routing mat, which uh, they stick amazingly sort of thing. You just put a mat on the table and off you go. But anyway, what we've got to do now is um, adjust this adjust this uh, router to the right depth um, what you don't want to do is put a step you know because you've got the router too deep kind of thing so I'm gonna grab my glasses wherever they are and have a, have a butchers and see what this is like Tools have their advantage, don't they? Like I say, again, it's a case you can always go deeper. Uh, let's lock that down. See what it looks like. <laughs> go a little deeper So we've got a little test, well not test area, I mean I could have done it on a bit of um, bit of scrap first, that would have been wiser, but I mean, I've done this a hundred times before so I kind of know what I'm doing. So let's get on and do this. So there we go, I'm really happy with that, finish that off with, um, with sandpaper now. Um, and you can see, like I say, I've left these bits here, I'll do those, do those by hand, and reducing the, um, the radius to something tighter till it just neatens up there and round here. Um, the other thing, this router, um, Triton router, is, is, is pretty damn good. I like the features on it. Um, for the price, I don't think you can beat it. Um, you've got a like a, a rough depth stop where you can wind the cutter up and down there. When you get it close, you can use this threaded adjuster there. You've also got a number of depth stops here which are very good to use because you can preset a depth 
then lock it with this and then you can only plunge down to that depth that's quite good also got a scale on there one millimeters yeah and and then this is quite important when you get to depth I always lock it um, you know I don't just rely on the upward spring loaded kind of thing so I lock it there um, the other nice feature on this is when you wind it right down that actually locks the cutter so you can unscrew it you don't need a couple of spanners on it sort of thing that's very neat the only thing I I don't like on it sounds a bit silly really is is these safety guards I you can't see you I mean I've taken one off that was round this side which is just like ridiculous you know when, once you start I want to see what I'm cutting especially if you're doing a bit of freehand routing um, but these things just get you know get basically um, more and more opaque as you get more and more dust on them when you're doing the job and it, it I don't really see that okay it might it might stop sawdust spraying in your eyes or something like that well you can wear goggles for that and I, I guess it's more there for dust extraction but I mean I don't have dust extraction in my shed it's too small but I well actually it's not because this this side guard is actually separate and I basically I find it a bit of a pain in the ass but easy to get rid of but you know 10 out of 10 for a router that's about 250 quid that would do all your guitar needs I think so um, well done Triton for that one but uh, there we go so let's have a look at this put this away um, so I'll, I'll just work work on getting these these um, these areas done now and it's sanded down kind of thing so there we go cheers okay um, I was just tidying up the neck the, 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 the little uh, the, the neck sort of uh, with the radius on the back of the body and, and, and transferring it into the neck when I actually looked at it um, I decided just to run the quarter bead router all the way around because when you look at the neck heel here um, the what I was afraid of was this radius would actually encroach on the side of the neck here which I wouldn't like I don't think it looks looks nice if you start tapering off the um, you know the side of the neck sort of thing but the the, the rollover bit I had it comes up perfectly to the bottom of the bottom of the neck there so I just continued round so it's got a nice smooth roll I mean you see a lot of telecasters where they chamfer the not a lot of telecasters but a design of telecaster where they either have a three three um, bolt neck and sort of quarter it off or chamfer it off but I think this is a nice halfway house sort of thing to keep it looking looking a bit traditional and you've still got a nice um, you know nice smooth smooth edge for your hand to play the upper frets there so I think we're getting that dialed in there now um, this requires a bit more sanding and I'll get that done and um, you know we'll go from there so it's looking really good now I think uh, you know looking really really special um, one thing I must say this limber wood is absolutely gorgeous to work with it's not too hairy when you sand it you know and it sounds a bit but I think that's quite a descriptive thing you know so and it it's nice and soft to work with it's not frustrating to sand where you seem to spend ages and get in nowhere um, it's a really beautiful light wood I mean this body you know I mean it's still got some weight to be removed with pickup routes and things it's, it just weighs next to nothing you know it really is it is spectacular weight sort of thing a really good wood to use and I think it's got a you know it's even got a nice grain in it and there's nice swirls and it. it's not unlike I guess it's not unlike ash kind of thing um, well in looks wise but definitely work wise it's a lot easier than ash to work but really really nice wood and like I say it comes from 
I think it comes from um, comes from a mahogany tree, Carina mahogany, but the, it's called Carina mahogany when it's towards the outside, toward the bark kind of thing, and it's more red there. The limber comes from nearer the centre of the tree. I might be talking a lot of old bollocks there, but um, I think that's what I read in the past, but you know, I'll always be corrected in the comments, but really nice wood. So anyway, we'll get we'll get weaving now. I'm not sure what I'm doing next. I might set up to do the um, the the edge rebate for the binding sort of thing. So bring you back then. Lovely. Cheers. Right. Okay. This is where some specialist tools or cutters really make life easy for you. Um, I want to cut the binding channel around the edge of this guitar. Now look at this rafter cutter on there okay um, it's just a plain square cutter but it's got a smaller bearing on it so it doesn't take too much to work out what's happening there um, I've cut a test piece and you can see no you can't see there we go so that boom fits over there actually it's that side that um, that fits so you know you can see what it does it, it, it just cuts to a given depth and unless the bearing actually breaks you can't really bugger it up because um, everything is like protected and for a flat top guitar you can do it like this um, in a router and just like uh, whiz round the edge of the guitar and you've done a perfect binding channel in five seconds. Um, there are other ways you can do it because these these actual um, sets of router cutters with different bearings, you get you get one cutter and a stack of bearings. They're, they're available probably like the easiest place to get them might be Stuart McDonald, but then you've got to import them into this country and all that. These were from there. I just swallowed the, the cost and got them a while ago. Um, but what what you can do as well is that you could, like I've done in the past, that's equally as successful, um, is get your router and just a simple guide like that and screw it on and then you can you know you've got a depth stop for your body so when you imagine that on there covering half the cutter you can only push it in to the body a certain amount if I'm doing it that way I tend to do it on my router table screw this to the router table run the body around the cutter same sort of thing though but that is equally as successful it's just not as quick um, set up but it but it's very doable so um, it's not insurmountable with normal tools kind of thing equally um, what you can do as well and what I've done in the past is you know if you've got say um, you know a, a cutter like You know this with a bearing on the end you can put a smaller bearing on okay you get a step but it might not be the right depth but you can wrap tape around the bearing um, to thicken it up make it bigger so you get the right step I mean yeah I mean it's not like a, you know it's not like sort of a wonderful solution um, but if you only want to cut one guitar and you don't want to spend like a hundred odd pounds on, on, on whatever, you know, on bearings and, and proprietary tools. That will get you by as well. But uh, anyway, let's get cutting the, the rebate for the, what's it, for the binding. So, like I say, I've done the test piece um, here. Here it is, it's six by two millimetre routing and that's pretty solid there that's pretty accurate now and I've locked the router down so we're good so we can hopefully get the oh god honestly like 
cordless tools, bloody wonderful, thank God for NASA. And this stupid bloody uh, guard where you can't see a goddamn thing. Right, rock and roll. <laughs> Look at that, absolutely gorgeous cut round there. Another thing I forgot to mention is, I mean, we did the other day, we, 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 we sanded the edge of the body nice and even and square and took out any little whatever's, you know, divots in it. Because obviously this, the bearing on the bottom of the binding router cutter follows the edge of the body. Now, if the edge of the body's lumpy, um, this inside edge is gonna be lumpy as well and you'll have a lot of cleaning up to do. So do that first get the edge of the body nice and even and the shape you want it and then do the routing sort of thing for the binding but I mean look how neat that is oh it's so it floats my boat to see that kind of thing it's lovely you know and now we can get the get the binding on there I can't believe how well this is turning out it's it's just so nice I mean I've been meaning to do a sort of custom telecaster for a while with this with this top wood. I've been wondering what to do with it and yeah this is this is gonna be one really really sexy guitar I think very subtle um, so there we go I think it's coffee time now I deserve a coffee after that I think don't you yep yep wife make my little bacon sandwich as well you never know okie doke I'll be back in a while well, I'm back. Um, no bacon sandwich, yeah, but I've got a cup of coffee anyway. Um, so the same as the neck um, or the fretboard that I did the uh, the flame maple binding on. Um, I'm doing the same on this, and uh, yeah, being a right old cheapskate, um, I didn't want to go out and buy any sort of thing. Um, it's just the postage that pisses me off. I don't mind paying for it, but when you have to pay more for the postage than you do the uh, product, it's, it sticks in the throat a little bit. Um, so I had this, as before, this spare book match set of um, guitar drop top kind of thing, a very highly flame maple, and I could steal a bit off the edge and steal plenty of width for, for a guitar there. So. Um, think I can do it all with three bits the only unfortunate thing is is that I'll have to join it somewhere um, around the edge um, I the lucky thing is with such a fussy a fussy grain on it um, probably be, I'll be able to hide the joint very very well which uh, which will hopefully be the case um, it's one thing I, re I really do not enjoy binding um, you know some usually it's plastic of course but and then it's a super glue job kind of thing um, and it goes everywhere but at least with this it will be uh, tight bond wood glue and hopefully I can keep it a lot neater um, the problem you have with a very figured wood 
is it's difficult to you know it's difficult to bend so I think I'm going to have I mean this is a bit springy but if I try and bend it around this corner it's just it's just going to snap off straight away so uh, what I'll be doing is um, using uh, using my steam bender so I'll get you back when we get to that I mean it's going to be quite an awkward job um, no doubt but uh, you know hopefully it will go well it'll be really nice Nice, n n nice to see it on there, and it looks as though um, it's going to fit. I mean, I've band sawed these off as I did before for the neck, and the the rebate is about uh, 2.3 millimeters deep. I've done these to about 2.5, so there's a little bit of there's a little bit of sanding um, to do after it's on there. So um, I think that'll work well. Um, so anyway, I'll get, I'll get you back when I've set up me bender and uh, go from there. Cheers. Okay, I think you can see um, in the background I've got my um, electric bender here. You might be able to hear it sizzling. Uh, with the wood on there. Um, so I'm going to be, I've had a little go trying to bend this and believe me it's not going to be easy. I'll have to see how it goes. So. I'm going to start off by trying to bend obviously the most difficult bit round here um, and if I can do that then I should be able to do the whole thing but uh, we'll see how it goes so I'm starting off just around here and uh, yeah it should be interesting but oh well you know let's give it a go um, I've got a pot of water here and um, so I don't like using too much water. Um, the other thing you can do on the bender is I've got a little bit of copper here. You can put that on the back of it that tends to keep the heat in the wood. But um, you trouble is you can't really feel then too easily how much force you are putting on the on the wood. So half a dozen of one, six of the other. We'll give it a go. It's looking quite encouraging, um, taking my time, but uh, say so keep referring back to the back to the instrument, and you know, mark sort of put your thumb where you want the bend to happen, sort of thing. So um, you can just keep on, keep on like titivating it and trying. The, the the secret with bending wood is really when you're on the pipe bender um, with it hot if you feel you're going to crack it you will I mean the wood should you know when it gets to the right temperature should feel quite plasticky and um, nice and easy to bend if you've got to force it you're going to snap it so um, just take it easy Personally, I, I don't think we're going to be able to do this, but I'm going to keep trying.
well I can't let me video run sort of thing so I'll just get on with it and bring you back cheers well um, I didn't really end up uh, filming any of that to be honest um, my least favorite jobs on guitars as I said was binding and this was no exception um, I won't put too fine a point on it uh, I nearly gave up and went to uh, plastic binding and I was all to go with like a, a, a marbled green and cream round the edge which I thought would have looked nice and then I suddenly realised oh hang on a cotton picking minute I've done the done the fretboard with this uh, with this flame maple and that would have just looked downright stupid so basically I persevered I mean the stuff just snapped everywhere you you know trying to bend it I, I couldn't really get any of the tight curves in one go, in, in, in one go you'd just be bending it would be going okay and then all of a sudden it would just snap which really is kind of hardly surprising I guess with uh, you know with the nature of of, uh, of, of of very figured wood it's very very difficult to bend so there's a lot of cracks there's a lot of burn marks around it and um, places will definitely need need to be filled which I, I don't think will be a problem because it, it will you know it will you won't even see the filler in it um, but you know you can see um, there's a wet bit of it here um, how nice the the figure is on it um, yeah just a horrible job to do um, you've got to be very creative with clamping as you can see here I've prob you know I've got probably 50% of the clam clamps in my shed it's going to take a a shit oh, hours to clean it up and file it and sand it and whatnot but cross fingers I really hope it 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 it, 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 look, it looks nice in the end I'll be really pissed off if it doesn't because it's just it's just been an absolute nightmare especially round um, you know around the bottom horn here on the body which which I can still see will just require filling and, and, and sanding and and whatnot. So yeah, didn't enjoy that at all. Didn't film it. There'd have been far too many expletives for like uh, for YouTube on there because it was driving me bonkers. Um, I've cut a very thin thin bit of veneer that I'm hoping to put round the um, I'm hoping to put round the sound hole here. Um, I'm pretty sure that will that will probably go a lot easier because it's so much thinner and wisely we decided to do a very simple um, uh, sound hole so that is, there's no tight curves on that so hopefully that will go okay um, but I'm going to leave that dry overnight I'm just hoping it sets okay because some of the wood is wet and you know glue doesn't stick too well to wet wood although this, this is a water based glue so hopefully it will I'll be, I'll be bloody annoyed if it, some of it springs loose but it seems to be you know as it is taking its time to set but um, there we go job jobbed uh, hopefully and um, we'll see what happens um, but I doubt whether I'll show it to you until I've done a bit of sanding on it because it just looks friggin' awful. But um, cross fingers, rock and roll, and uh, time for another coffee, I think, after that marathon task. Thank you. Okay, and welcome back to 3R Guitars and continuing on with this uh, sort of uh, quirky Telecaster build. Um, you saw yesterday that I just got totally frustrated um, with binding the guitar with this uh, flame maple binding. Um, I was under no illusion that it would be an easy job, but at some points I just thought this, this is ridiculous. And um, 
it kind of you know it's a bit it's a bit upsetting when um, you know you've been so careful uh, doing the build to keep everything tidy, clean, sanded, and lovely, and then one one little section, one process makes it turns it into an 11 year old woodworking project um, yeah I mean I hate binding I absolutely detest it whether it be plastic or wood anyway sometimes it just goes easy as pie and you just can't believe what the big fuss is the next time you do it it's just a pain in the arse and there's glue and shit and derision everywhere but um, anyway um, one thing I was careful of was when I was doing it that you know you've got the binding in the right place regardless of whether it's split or cracked or whatever um, so anyway I took all the clamps off this morning and um, I wasn't going to show you because it, it, to be honest it just looked it looked awful um, yeah and I'll be, I would honestly be a bit embarrassed to show you but it's got done and now it's not too bad so let me show you um, so here's, here's the, the binding round the edge and you can see how nice it's going to look. Um, you know, we've got a good joint around it. Um, it's very even, which is nice. I mean, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to roll the top over anyway. I don't like the sharp edge. Um, so overall, after about half an hour's, well, not half an hour, but an hour and a half's work, it actually looks okay with the sand in now. Now there are a few areas that I'm not happy with at all. Um, you can see here there's a little gap there. Um, I don't know how that happened. That must have that must have um, been when I went in for when I finished it, clamped it up, and and just went in tearing my hair out. Um, so we've got a gap there, and unsurprisingly we've got a gap there, um, but. I think um, they will feel okay um, I don't think there'll be any problem there because like I say it's a fussy bit of wood and uh, there'll be grain all over the place so as long as I fill that with like um, maybe some sawdust of the maple and uh, cram it in there I think I, I think it will be fine and there as well so overall I'm actually pleased with it now um, I was a bit concerned yesterday but like I said, I'd, I didn't want to use plastic because I'd already done the fretboard with this. So now we've got the maple binding everywhere. I think it ma matches really well. Um, so what I did was obviously the, 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 the binding stood up from the top because it was too wide and it was too thick. So um, with this binding being so, um, um, you know, fancy grain on it, um, it chips very easily so I didn't want to plane it so I actually used my surf thing to um, flatten it down to within about a millimetre of the top then sanded it. Now um, equally the side was too thick um, I haven't got a bit of it, bit of it left actually but, but oh here we go here's a little bit so it, it, you know, it was a good, a good mill or so too thick. Um, what I did with that was, I'll take you over here and show you. Um, I remember telling you about this trick before that will get you out of a, uh, uh, a fix. Um, here we have my fancy router cutter with a bearing on the top spinning around freely there and what I wanted to do was actually pass the body use the body as the guide there and you've got the, the, the binding sticking out by a mill or so so it went round like that but with this tape on there it holds the cutter just away from the ultimate depth of cut so if there was any chipping um, then it's not going to be you know chipping below the level that you want it sort of thing so um, I whizzed round with that and then sanded the rest of it down to depth so um, you know we've ended up with with you know a, a, a nice finish on there rather than chunks being taken out we've got a couple 
got just a little one there, but I mean all those can be filled. So basically, um, I kind of think, phew, that's a that's a job done. That that when I started doing it, I thought, oh Christ, this is the, the, you know my I, I hate that when I have a plan, a vision of what a guitar vision that sounds familiar, but but um, when I, when I have a plan for a guitar and I know what I want and I can't do it, I'll, I'll move heaven and earth to, to get the look that I wanted. And I just, I want this guitar to have no paint on it, just clear lacquer, just with the wood. So, you know, if I'd have stuck a plastic binding on it or anything, oh, I mean, you can see I've got, you know, got binding here that I thought I'd try. I've got green marble and cream and I was putting that round the edge and then I thought, hey, hub, I've got bloody done this already. So, um, I'm not going to do that. Um, so persevered, got it done. Um, not perfect, but I think it'll end up perfect after a bit of work. So, right, onwards and upwards. I'll find out what filler I want to put in here. Next job, I think um, I might attempt is this is a lot thinner, but I'm I'm cons I really would like some binding around the edge of the f hole here i think that would look really nice so i might try that next more bleeding binding great stuff eh? speak to you soon guys oh hi there um i've just been continuing on on this pain in the ass binding um you can see that i've i've gone around the um the f hole now with the with the um flamed maple binding. This was a lot thinner than the, the edge binding um, which made it slightly easier to bend but yeah it's not a, it's not a like a thing I'm going to use again I don't think. Um, it's just too difficult to uh, get a neat job and it's ju just frustrating sort of thing so um, yeah it's like a change of heart I think this is going to be the last time I I, I, I use wooden flame binding, um, too difficult uh, for me anyway. Um, but it's all done now, thank goodness. I'm not sure where I'm, where I'm going to go to next on the guitar. Um, I've got the bridge on order and uh, various hardware, bits of hardware, but frustratingly the, all the bits that I don't need now have come, but not the bits I need, and I really want the... I really want the um, the bridge so I can finalise the the um, the neck angle kind of thing. Um, I might uh, I'll probably work on the neck actually now. Um, I'm getting to that stage where I can glue the fretboard on, uh, but I want to finalise a headstock shape. So I'll probably work on that. And um, Having said that we finished the binding, no we haven't, I've just realised, ugh, because I want to um, bind the headstock um, as well to match what I think I do. I think it would just look much nicer with with um, with binding on it, so um, we'll, we'll go from there and, 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 and uh, once we get the headstock finalised I think it's going to be a, a case of like... Um, yeah, just settling on the shape and doing it a bit like the the F hole here, which I like now. I'm not going to think about it too long. Um, but yeah, coming on, I just wish it was wish it would have gone a bit neater. Um, but well, there we go. Hey ho, that's guitar building for you. Um, yep. So let's move on. <laughs> 